So uh, we're back in here and uh, I've done a little exploring. So basically this one X brace is loose here and I'm, I can get to that relatively easily, get it sanded, get some more glue in there, clamp it. And, uh, and then after that, I have enough space between the brace and the, um, and the curfing on the curfing, the flat section of the curfing. I didn't really roll it off or taper it. I can put a, I can put a little cleat under there to help support that brace. The back block. Um, it looks like I'm running out of out of battery here, so we can. The creaking you hear right now is this other brace creaking. But I can, well, if I can get my hand in there for me. Now listen. So I'm pushing that in. It's definitely not connected on the top of the guitar. And then I'm pushing it back with my fingers on the inside. So I've got lots of movement there. Uh, I don't have any movement on the bottom. The bottom of that block is still glued in, so that's not moving. Okay, same thing once this is glued in. Uh, I'm going to put a cleat on the top right in front of that, that heel block so that it, once it's glued in position, I can reinforce it with a cleat right on top of that. Just, uh, you know, a half inch wide by the width of the, um, the tail block. Which is only two inches, by the way. The tail block is actually under two inches wide. All right, folks. Back to the Sigma Martin. Let me uh, see if I can explain this with any sort of clarity. So, while I was off camera, after we talked about the bracing, I, uh, I did get a hold of the customer. The customer wants to uh, go ahead and do the repairs necessary uh, to put this thing back together. Well, I found another loose brace. Happens to be the transverse brace right across the front of the guitar goes straight across has a hole in it for the adjusting of the truss rod um so was able to uh clean that up and glue it and clamp it um so what i like to do is i use in this particular instance i used a little screw clamp which i will show you um it's like a post basically i checked the post to see if that would work i had a couple different ones here that I use for inside brace work that you can just basically uh, rotate into in between braces. And uh, if I can ever get in the camera, there we go. Uh, you just stand it up between braces and it applies pressure in you know, varying lengths. This is a screw jack type of a post. And I get that and I screw it up until it's got some contact, but not, you know, you, you could, in theory, if you wanted to, you could tighten the screw jack enough we actually separate the guitar or crack the guitar because uh, you can exert a lot of force. So I get to a point where things are just clamped up snugly and then I put an outside support, which is what this brace is, this uh, clamp is about. So I'm just supporting the, the outside of the, the framework of the guitar and then I can apply a little more pressure to the screw jack. So um, in removing said screw jack, you need to uh, do the screw jack first and uh, and turn it in the direction that loosens it. And so you might be able to hear a little creak. Now it's looser, now I'm loosening this jack in connection with that jack clamp so that I don't smash the guitar and read it. Now that's maybe a slight exaggeration because I didn't have either of these clamps that extremely tight. That is what the screw jack looks like, or screw post, or clamp, or whatever you want to call it. That is a um, Stu Mac product, and I tell you that I don't remember what it was, but when I bought it, it was reasonable, and I thought something from Stu Mac that is reasonable. I should have a handful of them because they're just a great value, um, and you could use more than one at a time. I also have the little actual. Um, scissor jack, scissor screw jack that they sell for over a hundred dollars, which is also really great in certain applications, but um, 
I found it isn't as strong. I cannot exert as much pressure with the little screw jack as I can with this jack. So I just, when I can get into it easily with this one, I use this one. I, like I said, I still use other variations, like just different length sticks. Um, and you put them in and you can just teeter them to apply pressure to one end of a brace or another. So now that this brace has been glued, um, <clears throat> I will back up again just in case I haven't explained this enough. Uh, I have things like this, um, different thin pieces of metal or even nail files, you know, um, emery boards, uh, that you can get in between a loose brace and the top and sand and make sure your joint is clean. And I use the same, I use this, I use that. Uh, I even just put pieces of sandpaper in and basically floss with it, like set in the neck or something. Um, now, what's going to happen is, oh, anyway, I put glue in um, with this. I just smear a little glue on the end of that, and I fish it in there and work it in between the brace, and then I do it about five more times to make sure I've got plenty of glue. Then I wipe off the excess uh, on either side of the brace, and then I clamp it. Now I'm going to put a cleat, as I mentioned earlier. I want to cleat underneath these things because they were cut short of the kerfing and the the um, especially the X brace, maybe not so much this one, but since it was loose, I'm going to go ahead and put a cleat under it. Uh, so right on top of the, the uh, curved lining, um, I am going to put a cleat. And so right now I am just sanding the kerfed lining right under the cleat right under the brace, I should say. And uh, I made a video here just a couple, about a week ago, maybe, um, of me making round cleats. And I don't think I've posted that yet, but I also have material to make uh, square cleats out of. This happens to be left over from my side, uh, the 335 base build. Anyway, I am going to uh, cut it the depth of the, I'm gonna probably leave it the width it is this way. I'm gonna run it just like that up and down. And uh, I'm going to attach it. So I need to get in here, measure this, and then just take a very small piece of this off of here and glue it in. And I'm going to use the magnet method, which you've already seen in other videos, where I just take a pair of these magnets and position uh, one magnet on the uh, inside with the piece and then the other magnet on the outside. And it just clamps it together, holds it in place while it dries. So I'm kind of explaining that rapidly because I think you all know what I'm talking about. But... Um, by the time I get it done, I will have not only explained it, but I will have demonstrated it. And uh, since you can't see the inside of the guitar, it still may not make a great deal of sense to you. Uh, just brushing off that area that I just sanded. I probably could use a smaller brush for the inside. Um, this is a dry run on the thing, and it's, um, I think it's the thickness of the wall here. You've got the, the guitar, excuse me, the guitar side, and then also the, the lining, and then also the cleat itself. So there's very little tension on this magnet through all of that. Um, I'm just thinking about, yeah, actually, when you go down to just the side, material it's much much stronger anyway uh, so I've just got this little cleat I had this uh, this brass handle on here originally and it was just too heavy it was it, the magnet wouldn't hold it up this um, fish glue I'm using is very um, uh, collagen glue in general is known for actually drawing a joint together so even if you uh, don't have a lot of clamping pressure 
the uh, as the glue dries, it will actually pull that uh, joint tighter. And I'm gonna put a little extra on there. So I and another part of it that doesn't help is that I've actually offset the cleat on the magnet. If you can maybe see from that direction because it has to get all the way up underneath the brace, and if you have it centered, then the magnet is holding the cleat away from the brace, and we don't want that to happen. I want to get that right up in there. And I've got to make sure it's flat. There we go. And like I said, there's hardly any, any pressure on that. I actually tried it with another magnet. Now that magnet actually a little more pressure. All right, and I'm gonna just make sure it's in there. I tried it once and it was kind of in there at an angle, canted on the lining, not actually flat on the lining. So I want it to be flat so that we know it's getting, that it's 100% possible glue surface. And it looks good. Uh, I'm going to push it toward the front of the guitar a little bit so it's centered on the brace. Sorry if I blinded you with the light. Try that again. Too far? Probably. Let's see here. I just. I lost it. There it is. Now we're good. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. That's exciting. Got it. Okay, so that will um, help reinforce that, that brace so that uh, if it ever gets deflected in such a way that it wants to pop off of there, it'll be it'll act as if it's locked into the to the uh, kerfing there, so the liner. Figuring out exactly where my other brace is at, so what I'm gonna do is uh, underneath my uh, X brace here, out at the edge of the body. Well, if I can make my hand go that way. There we go. You see that magnet moving around? So, there we go. There's the. There's where I'm at for my X brace. Um, I've been. Uh, well, previously, not today. I, um, I've been looking for a clamp that will go in far enough, but not too far. So in other words, if it goes in the sound hole, but it interferes on the other side of the sound hole, then that's too big. My bridge clamps that I made, my wooden um, Ibex type bridge clamp, uh, was too big, it hit the sound hole here. Then I had some C clamps that were too short this way. And so I've got another one laying here that I think is going to work. But I just want to mark basically where the end of the clamp is going to be because I can't get my hand in there when the clamp's in there. So I'll just put that piece of tape there as an indicator. And I'm going to try this clamp and see. Okay, that actually goes all the way to the edge without hitting the sound hole. So that's going to work out. Now all i got to do is... Um, because the clamp is beveled, uh, it's on, well, it's on an angle and it's tapered, the, the brace itself, I think I just said clamp, but the brace itself is angled and tapered. And um, I should probably put some sort of a piece in there. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure 
the size of this foot is uh, longer that I'm in, I'm getting into the the uh, angled part, the beveled part of that brace, the the scalloped end. So uh, I will double stick tape a a little block in there that I can get up under that, and then I'll put a padded block here, and I'll just clamp this one from inside. So because there isn't a there's not a uh, cross brace on the bottom, on the back, directly underneath where this X brace is. Otherwise, I could use the jack. So I've just got a little block. I just cut a piece of shim off of a, what I call door shims. And, uh, and I've got two-way tape on that. So I will get in there and stick that on top of the, the brace when after I've glued it. And this will be my top call. I think I'm going to make sure that's clean before I do anything. And I'll just stick it right there so that I have something solid to clamp to on both sides. Now I have to do is uh, devise a method for gluing. Um, I'm taking the tape off of this ahead of time so that once the glue is in there I don't have to fiddle with that. So now that's ready. I will set it aside. And I did just take a second with a sanding block and just took all the sharp edges off of this little piece of wood just so I'm not accidentally putting a crease in anything. Uh-huh. What else? I guess that's it. So I'm going to just start putting glue in here. And uh, just put a little glue here on the feeler gauge. Once again, completely blind. Going in, actually, I'm going to put it on the brace first. I think if I go up against the top and then down onto the brace and drag it, I should get a good pile of glue on there. Looks like I did. Do that again. Turn it over. I was under the brace there. All right, now I'm going to slide up into the tighter area and then pull it out and that should also get some glue smeared around in there much more better now I am loading that up again I I'm, realize I was doing that off camera put my light and my mirror in there and see where all I've got glue smeared all over everything. Well, I'm going to smear some more glue in there because I don't I don't even see any place I've I mean, I can tell I've got glue up in there, but I I don't have any glue dripping all over everything, so there can't be enough in there yet. I'm gonna go up on to the top itself this time. Right now I've just got it, oh, you know, just for kicks and giggles. I'm actually just gonna push that up against the, the top and see, and we'll take a look now and see if I've got any squeeze out from that previous Yeah, I can actually see glue now, but I'm still going to put some more in there. On lots, lots and lots and lots of glue. Oh, I found my magnets. <laughs> now when I slide this in here, it's going to get all over everything on the top, so I'm going to Try to lead with another finger, kind of get into the correct area before I actually slide it because, like I said, it's just going to get glue everywhere. But we need glue everywhere, so that's okay. I'm uh, doing 
needs more. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. This is fish glue. I like fish glue. I like high glue a lot, but I don't like having to mess with keeping the glue warm, keeping the joint warm and all that. So for these sorts of things that are really hard to get to, um, I just absolutely prefer the hide, the, uh, excuse me, the fish glue. And once again, oh, I got glue all over the back of the brace now. Well, the front of the brace, whatever. The part of the brace I'm pushing on. Let's have another look at this. You know, I probably should have one of those mirror things that you just leave in the guitar like that. You fold it out underneath. I guess I can get in there with that in the way. It would make it better. I'm gonna keep putting glue in here until I'm uh, got a massive mess inside here so that I'm very, very positive that I'm covered. take this call all right so I've actually got uh, quite a bit of glue in there now I'm still gonna put a little more glue in um, one more one more dab with the with the glue here and, uh, and I'm gonna clamp it because I'm pretty sure we've got plenty in there get this out of my way Let's get busy. Oh, one more, one more cleanup here, maybe. All right, let's do this. So I got the little block right here. Trying to make sure I'm centered somewhat in there on that. Slipping a little piece of paper towel in there. Well, that feels very s sideways and not solid. So let me uh, take a look at that. Make sure even if it's sideways, as long as it's got that clamp up there flat. I mean the brace. over a bit. Let's see if I can get in there and figure out my braille. Yeah, it needs to it needs to pull back a little bit, believe it or not. And over there. I don't know why that's rocking.
Ouais. Still not happy with that. Take my watch off. things around. Now I got my own my own hand in my own way. Let's, let's, let's go like that. Okay, believe it or not, I'm closer. I still don't think I've got it completely. I'm, um, I'm kind of catching one corner of the kerf with the edge of the clamp, so I just need to pull this back a little bit to get off that kerfing. There we go. Now I think that I don't have anything holding me up. Yeah, it's a little weird. Getting dentist rates for this mirror action. All right, now I think.